Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Golden Speakers Toastmasters Club weekly meeting. My name is Rick Starr. I'm the president of this Toastmasters Club. I'll be president for another couple of weeks. We have new officers coming in. I see we have some guests. Jefferson, welcome. Thank Glad you. to see you. Like I said, I see you about once a year, although I see you more often at work. And could you tell us your name and why you're here? Uh, I've been Jones, and my father is giving a talk today. Good. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming, Jefferson. One thing, if, you, if anyone has a phone, please turn it off so as not to disturb our speakers. The mission of this Toastmasters Club is to provide a safe and supportive environment where people can develop their communication skills and their leadership skills, thereby developing personal growth and self-confidence. Each meeting we have a, a Toastmaster who plays the role of Toastmaster, who is the Master of Ceremonies, and today, that's Will Burns. Great pleasure to introduce Mr. Toastmaster, Will Burns. Thank you, Rick. And that just called on to, on to me the redundancy of that title. I actually, if I ever ran for president of Toastmasters International, I'm sure I'd vote to make that the master of ceremonies or something. That's too ambiguous. The Mastering Commander, I think, might be a better Sorry. So we have a great meeting tonight. I am so glad to be back among all of you, with all of you, after far too long apart. Tonight's theme is Father's Day. I thought I'd do it a week in advance so you have a nice reminder in case you've forgotten. But the quote being, my father gave me the greatest gift anyone could give another person. He believed in me. That was by Jim Balvino. We have a full schedule tonight, so I'm going to just hit right through here. Start starting off with our invaluable role players behind the scenes. First, our timer session. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, as a timer, my role is to remind the speakers on how much time they spent on their speech and how much time they have before they should finish their speech. Uh, I will raise green, green light, yellow light, and red light uh, for uh, evaluators, speakers, general evaluators, and uh, table topics masters. And uh, at the end of the meeting, I will present my report for everyone. For now, please enjoy the meeting. Back to Toastmasters of the evening. Tell us what the five-star speech. I uh, know I can uh, tell that. Yeah. Thank uh, you. So for speakers, uh, maximum time is seven. Green uh, light goes out at five. Yellow at six, and red at seven. Uh, for table topics, uh, green goes out at one. Yellow at one thirty, and red at two. So the maximum time is two for table topics speakers. A uh, speech evaluators, they have maximum three minutes and. Uh, Green uh, comes up at 2, yellow at 2.30, and red at 3. And finally, for general evaluator, uh, 4 is the maximum uh, minutes. Green comes at 3, yellow at 3.30, and red at 4. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And just to be clear, Mr. Timer, there is a 30 second grace period at the end. Is that correct? There's a, there's a 30 second grace period at the end. So at the end and at the beginning for some categories. Yes. Next, we have our grammarian, Tabitha Sedgwick. Good evening, Toastmasters. Um, do we have guests in the room? Hi, hi, thank you for being here. Hello, hello. So I'll be the grammarian tonight, and the responsibility of the grammarian is to listen to language used by members during the meeting, make a note of any exceptionally good or bad uses of language, English or otherwise, Give a brief re brief report at the end of the meeting about what I heard or observed. 
and listen for the word of the day, which I'll tell you in a moment what that is. At the end of the meeting, I'll give a report about all of this and how this word was used as well. And tonight's word is transform. So the verb for definition of transform is make a thorough or dramatic change in form, appearance, or character of, or to take or use another instead of. And then the noun usage would be the act or instance of making or becoming different. We can use it in any tense or form, like transformation could be an example. Thank you. Thank you, Cass. And now our next role player, crucial in transforming our speakers. <laughs> better ones. Good if I thought that was better. Is our odd counter, Dennis. It's odd counter. I get to double check on how many odd, odds, ums, likes, you know, like we like to say in North Dakota a lot. So, but, and tongue click, Xerox, also known as repeat, and false starts that you have. I'll tell them right here, and I'll tell you the bad news after the meeting. <laughs> and next we have our general evaluator who we, who we will hear from later in the meeting. For reference, our computer truck master will be Emery Styron. And now let's dig into that juicy tofu steak that is the key prepared speeches and to read objectives for our first speaker, Orion Abrams. Good evening, Toastmasters, honor guests, viewers at home. I'll be evaluating uh, Fraser Jones' speech tonight, and he's doing number four, how to say it, uh, which is to just speak concisely and, and, and you know, short, short sentences, short paragraphs. Um, <clears throat> and Fraser Jones hails from the beautiful island of Dominica in the Caribbean, where he attended elementary and high school. He obtained a BS in civil engineering at the St. Augustine campus of the University of the West Indies in Trinidad. After working as a civil engineer, he came to Maharishi University in 1988 and obtained an MS in computer science. He has been in Fairfield since and currently works at LISCO. Fraser Jones, everybody. Richard Feynman, the noted Nobel physicist, was on a committee to select science books for the California school system. He was surprised to find that one of the books that got high rating actually only had blank pages in between the covers. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow members, Yes, yours at home. You should not make decisions based on superficial and superstitious information. You don't, don't matter what you read, hear, or say, you shouldn't just act on it. You should do your own analysis. Figure out the pros and cons because information can be outdated, oversimplified, or just plain wrong. I'll go through three things I learned um, in, three examples I learned in high, high school. Or oh, physics textbook, it said there were only NPN silicon transistors. I was an electronics hobbyist, and I had PNP, 
silicon transistors. I did some research and found out that, yeah, there was one time when there was, there was a time when there were only NPN silicon transistors. So it was obvious that the textbook was outdated. In biology, they said, the biology text said, in respiration, the plant gave out carbon dioxide from pores from under the leaf. So we did an experiment, put an indicator under the leaf, and it worked like a charm. The indicator turned from red to blue. Sorry, the indicator turned from blue to red. The teacher said, try it on top of the leaf. So the indicator turned from blue to a kind of purplish, pinkish. We were a little confused because the book said that the pores were at the, on, on the side of the leaf. And we didn't expect anything to happen on the top. The teacher explained that, that that was an oversimplification. Oversimplification. Most of the pores are underneath, but there are a few pores on top. My brother studied economics. So I went through his economics book. It said that African countries were underdeveloped because there were no natural resources. I mean, I was dumbstruck. What about Japan, <coughs> Hong Kong, Singapore? This was inaccurate. He must be mistaken or this information was downright wrong. So you see information can be outdated, oversimplified, or wrong. You have to do your analysis and make a decision. If you, it doesn't matter if you read, see, or, or hear the information on TV, radio, or internet. If it was bad on the internet, it is bad. It will, it's bad on the TV. It's not mathematics. In mathematics, two negatives is a positive. <laughs> this is not maths. It's life. So you should follow this golden rule in life. Take responsibility for all, take responsibility for all your actions. If you, you are not going to react to anything that Tom, Dick, and Harry say. You are not a puppet or, or a robot or a zombie. They're not, you, don't, you don't react by them just pulling your strings or programming, programming you or react to the command. You have to take responsibility for your action. Right? When the financial advisor or financial advisor come around, forget about the looks, forget about the voice. Be cool, calm, and collected. Don't suffer from paralysis. Do your analysis, otherwise, your cash will separate. you lose your cash in a flash. <laughs> when the politician come around, the same. Forget the looks. Forget the voice. Do your analysis. Because you are making decisions that don't affect you. It, if it affects you, your children, your grandchildren. Your decision can affect many generations. It, it can affect the country. It can affect the world. Don't 
don't judge a book by its cover. It might be empty. You should not make decisions based on <coughs> so outdated information or oversimplification or bad information. Do your analysis. Don't be one of those that say, if I had known, or he looks so good, he looks so sincere. You are responsible for your action. So take action and help transform the world. Thanks. Please take two minutes to evaluate the Fraser's speech. Come back. And now it's my pleasure to call up our general evaluator, Susanna McCann. We're now transitioning into the evaluation and extemporaneous speaking part of our meeting. I would like to call on Fraser's evaluator for the evening, and that's Orion Abrams, to evaluate Fraser's talk. So, uh, I forgot to mention what Fraser's speech was actually called, Don't Judge a Book by Its Cover, that was the title. Uh, Fraser had a, had a great speech, he had a thing I'm that I liked most about it was you had a lot of a lot of passion, um, especially when you were talking about bad information you get on TV or in the media, and you said it's not mathematics. <laughs> it was great. Uh, I also thought it was a, a really a really well organized speech. Um, you went from talking about the silicon transistors, to the biology experiment, to the economics book, and and then transitioning to Af um, bad information about African countries. Um, I also liked that you paced around a lot. You, you, uh, it was, it's a little bit erratic, the pacing, you know, but it, it worked, I thought it worked really well for the speech. Um, it allows you to kind of fume and fumigate, um, <laughs> <laughs> transform from, anyway, I, I tried to use transform there, but it didn't work. Uh, so yeah, the, the speech the speech topic was appropriate for this particular assignment. Absolutely, use um, sh short, simple, and clear words. Uh, one thing I thought you could maybe use more was um, did the speaker use rhetorical devices to enhance his or her ideas? I thought maybe you could use more metaphors, uh, you know, and, and maybe maybe some more descriptive, vivid words uh, for this assignment. Use good grammar and pronunciation, and the speech was clear and very well organized. Um, just one thing you could have done differently, I thought, was to explain for the dumb people like me what the, <laughs> what the things were your, you know, like the silicon transistors and the biology experiment, I didn't quite understand what you were talking about there. Um, so maybe just explain to the uneducated of us. Uh, but yeah, it was a great speech overall, thanks. And now we'll turn, we'll turn to the table topics section of our talk. And our table topics master this evening is Marco Yannick. So good evening to everyone. Fellow Toastmasters, guests, viewers at home. For tonight, we have two options, and I would like to hear from you what would you like rather. 
I really enjoyed last, our last meeting. We had so much fun. And uh, this is the first time I ever experienced something like that. So I'm interested in who would like to do that again tonight. So raise your hand if you would like to do the storytelling in a circle again. Whoever is interesting. We're going to do it at our couple of weeks, too. Hmm? We're going to do it at our party in a couple of weeks, too. Just yeah. To Okay, but just, I'm asking for tonight, if anybody's interested. Table topics, just regular table topics? Raise your hand. Okay, the regular table topics. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to tell you the subject of the questionnaires, because I don't know yet exactly. It will come to you when I see you and stand in front of me. And you stand in front of me. So is anybody, there's any volunteers? Please one. So, Jean, can you tell yourself most valuable advice? You can go, like, imagine that you're going time travel now, 10 years before, and you can change, 10 years, and you can change something about your life, something that was crucial, some uh, intersection that will take your life in a totally different uh, direction and maybe at a different place at this point. So what kind of advice would you give yourself? If you, like ten, imagine that you went 10 years and you whispered to yourself in the ear. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Since I'm a little older than that, I'm going to allow myself to go back maybe 20, 30 years just because I have that availability. Fellow Toastmasters and guests, viewers at home. Since our theme tonight is Father's Day, I'm also going to shape my answer around father. I had a somewhat complicated relationship with my father, and I am the eldest. I think what I would do, my advice to myself to dial it back was I have to first give you a little bit of a background. My father was rather conservative. This is how people <coughs> do things, and we don't go outside of the certain margins. In order to gain his affection, you had a choice. You had to either stay within that margin and not really be who you were, if you were an outside of the margin kind of girl, or you had to go outside of the margin and know that there was going to be this paternal cooling effect, and you would feel that. And as the eldest child, I was used to being daddy's girl, and then I started to not be daddy's girl because I wasn't fitting in the margins. So my advice to myself, taking that little girl under my wing, would be to say, Jean, you be who you are, doesn't matter what he thinks, you're going to get older, you're going to be great, whether or not he approves of you or not, so you just be glorious and be the best person you can be, and whoever you attract, they are meant to be in your life, and the others don't really matter. That was amazing. I loved it. Anybody else like to volunteer? All right. Please welcome. <laughs> oh, Art, I'm interested. In your life, at some point, you realize you have a, I hope so, you have a true friend. So I would like to maybe just tell us and share when did when that happened? When was that crucial point in your life when you realized you have a real friend to stand and hold your back when you need it? My sophomore year in college, I lived, shared a dorm room with a graduating senior named Dwight. 
and realized that I had a true friend. Dwight and I have known each other since 1966, and we're still in regular communication. I saw him about three months ago. My dad was trained as a civil engineer at the United States Coast Guard Academy, and he served a 20-year career in the U.S. Coast Guard. And his advice to me when I was going to college was, be a chemical engineer. Now, I didn't want to be a chemical engineer. I didn't think that looked like a great idea. But Dwight, my college roommate, did take that career path slight variation on being a chemical engineer, but he ended up working for major chemical companies for a long career, and he and I share a passion for music, scientific questions, all sorts of things that make him a true friend, and he chose the path that my dad recommended and has excelled at it, I chose a completely different set of paths, and I'm not sure whether I excelled at them or not. So my dad actually was, in many ways, a true friend. We had a very simple relationship, not the complex one that Gene was describing. He was a true friend that I didn't appreciate until after he passed away. So thanks for the opportunity to talk about my dad and my best friend, Dwight. Anybody else would like to volunteer? All right. Question for you. Huh. Imagine somebody told you you have five years to live, and that's it, you what you have. That's the only thing. But you have one choice. Whichever field you choose to um, do, you will excel. You will have an ultimate success, fame, and money. So there is one thing that you can choose. Just one thing, one field. Which field would that be and why? Can you share that with us? There was one field I could choose to be in and I had five years to live, but I'd excel at it for sure. I would really like to do something as a faculty member of a university, but a very, very respected faculty member that a lot of students would, everybody would be listening to and would take my advice into consideration regardless of whether they wanted to hear it or not. <laughs> because sometimes you gotta tell people mean stuff. They don't like it. The reason why I say this is because I believe that Teachers, no matter what, really are an example to all of us. And although that you don't necessarily remember everybody's name that was your teacher at one point in your life, I feel like every, almost everybody has, or at least in my experience, almost everybody has one or two teachers that touched their life. Reverting back to in my college experience and reverting back even to high school, I would say one teacher of mine in high school, who became a professor later on, after I was done with high school, was the most influential mentor for me, other than my parents and my own family. The reason why I say this is because he believed in me at a time where I would really question the world, I questioned everything, to the point of I didn't want to do anything other than playing soccer once in a while and just hanging out with friends, but I had really no no super focused goal that I needed. 
he believed in me. He saw potential that I had. And he said, you know what, you're going to do well in your career because I see the focus that you have. That meant a lot to me. I would like to touch everybody's life and have them respect my opinion. That's what I would like to do for five years. Thank you. Really great speech. I can totally relate about the professor as well. Had a really great influence in my life. High school teacher. Anybody else? Anybody? Okay, Anne-Marie. Question for you. If you could choose one place on this planet to earth, to live abundantly, no work, no nothing, just to enjoy, which place would that be and why? All well, Toastmasters, guests, and viewers at home. I'm one of those people who's fairly easily influenced by the last person I talked to or the last movie or TV show I saw. My wife and I happen to be hooked on British whodunits. And the BBC produces a lot of them and we go through them. <laughs> we don't binge, but we may watch an episode two or three episodes a week if we're home together. And the current favorite is called Death in Paradise. Has anybody seen oh, it? I have. Yeah. Set on the uh, fictional island of St. Marie, um, a British territory, I suppose, in uh, probably Fraser's home area. <laughs> And it just seems to be a lovely, lovely place. The women are beautiful, <laughs> as Camille is in that show. And the people are all, seem to have a relaxed, good time attitude. And so I've decided I'd really like to live in a place like St. Marie. <laughs> So, Madam, Madam, Mr. Table Topics Master, St. Marie is my answer. <laughs> yeah, the island, usually some island with clear, crystal clear water and sand and palm trees. Yeah, I think most of the people... Why didn't I think of those things? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, what? <laughs> Wait, and yeah, whose island is this? <laughs> Anybody else would like to? I'll do it. Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll okay. So I, was, I had one question special, but I'm not going to give it to you. Okay. Before you have some serious questions. This serious is question. I'm a this serious person. So, kind of similar question like I had for uh, the president. If I could do anything, if I could do anything. If you can master any skill, have a mastery over any skill, mm -hmm. which skill would that be and why? Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Guests, Toastmasters and viewers at home. If I could master any skill, I would say it would be, it's hard to limit it to one skill. I mean, could I, just one, yeah. just one. <laughs> would he, not even two, just I'm one, so okay. Mastery. mastery. I think mastery is, in my life, uh, is, is, is a state of where effortlessness comes. And it's, it's not like, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a mover, right? I move furniture, I move pebbles, I move... It's very easy to become a master of that. But mastery, I think, is a state at which 
you're not questioning things just work out you have support of nature but for me I, I feel that in my in my job right now where I make ghee and uh, ghee is clarified butter right everyone knows well you probably don't know but some of you may know what ghee is if you don't know what ghee is look Google search how to make ghee at home um, it's really fun uh, but so I'm a master at that I think I've been doing it for six months now and um, and I feel like every time I walk in that room, I can leave and I will be assured that I will not make a single mistake. It's just, I don't know, I just feel, I feel that, that confident about, about my skills. And um, so that, I am already a master of that. So that leads me to my next skill, which I would like to master. Um, I, think, I think it just would have to be something technical that allows me to think and be creative and use my body and I'm not sure what that is yet but you know Dennis is a solar panel installer and I, I aspire to do that. that that is a skill that I would like to master um, being on top of a roof you know reducing climate change reducing the impact of global warming on our on our planet and just really installing okay, so the skill let me just lay it out installing solar panels boom and how much time do I have <laughs> All right, that's it. I got the red light. But installing solar panels is a great skill that I would like to master because it has far-reaching benefits and it will transform our energy system to a sustainable source and reduce the amount of problems that we've accumulated over the past 30 years, 40 years from industrial practices. Thank you. We have more time for the one more. One more. Okay. Anybody else would like to dance? Let us welcome Dan. I have a great question for you. So, in this case, you didn't met yet meet uh, Chi. You're about to meet her for the first time in your life. She doesn't know who you are, but she what you're interested in. Or not, she doesn't know anything about it. She might own a business, maybe she's in store buying something, and you just hear and you know that's the woman of your life. And that's it. You want to marry her, and just you said, you just feel it. That's it. But now, you only have 10 minutes to convince her <laughs> that, get her extra time? That, you, that you are right person for her and that she's the right person for you. So how would you do that? Can you tell us? No. <laughs> <laughs> and you have a... Uh, uh, you can talk to her. You can talk to her. She's, uh, <laughs> I'm taking my 30 seconds. I haven't started yet. <laughs> no Mr. Topics Master, fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, viewers at home. I'm going to, to answer this theoretical question, I'm going to borrow from actual life. When I first met Jean and we went out to lunch for the first time, it turned out that the secret to kind of clicking with Jean was the fact that we both read a lot. I don't think you can necessarily expect to sweep someone off their feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I read a lot. <laughs> but it turns out we were sitting at lunch in the in the actual lunch. It was a you know, we were both on lunch break from work and our one hour lunch went two hours. We both kind of snuck back to work. <laughs> we found out we had a lot of things in common. We'd both done the masters in SCI at MUM a number of things like that. But the thing that really kind of clicked was when we started talking about books. Somehow that, in our case anyway, somehow that kind of clicked
clicks on an emotional level. Oh yeah, I like that kind of book, or yeah, I read that book. And so that was the secret of my success. <laughs> I think if I had to do it over again, I'd do the same thing, because it worked. <laughs> We had done pretty nice table topics. Everyone was so great. Uh, I'm really grateful for all of you. So, our, our timer. Are the uh, old table topic qualified? The table topic speakers qualified? Yes, everyone is qualified. Okay, thanks. Could you say their name, please? Yes. Uh, yeah. Jean Samington Craig, uh, she used one. Just not the times, okay. Uh, table topic speakers were Jean, Art, Denise, Emery, Prana, and Dan Craig. Thank you. I think now uh, you have a chance to vote for your uh, best table topic speaker. So you're real live and back in action again. So if you vote for your favorite table topic, speaker for tonight. Now I would like to, to introduce our table topic evaluator, Santori Arash. Please welcome Santori Arash. Good evening guests, fellow Toastmasters and viewers at home. I believe we had a very good table topic tonight and I'd like to give everyone another hand for doing such Okay. So our first speaker was Jean. Huh? One, should we give you a little more time? Oh, yeah, yeah. Six, so yeah. Like, we'll do three, three to four. Does that work? Yeah, that's fine. Three to, three to four. Three to four minutes. Three to four um, minutes. Okay. Our first speaker tonight was Jean. You had a very interesting question, and I applaud you for also bringing tonight's theme into your talk. I felt that your talk about how you had this complicated relationship with your father ended up being very positive and almost enlightening. And the only suggestion I would make to you is that I feel that you're so good at structuring your talks, you don't have to explain so much at the beginning, especially in a table topic, because it's so little time, and your speech had so much substance that we would have understand perfectly well without you saying, okay, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, because really the meat was your talk, and it just took away time. And sometimes you don't have enough time when you do speak, so just get to the meat. Art was our second speaker, and you talked about your great friend Dwight, and you also managed to do a quasi segue about bringing how your father is a great friend to you. Again, you're another experienced speaker, and it was really hard for me to find something to suggest because what I really like about your speeches is the way you put your silence in between your words. Because a lot of people aren't comfortable with nice pauses, but I believe pauses bring a certain level of strength to a speech. But <laughs> I would say that you have very intense eyes. <laughs> and sometimes when you, when you kind of scan the room, I feel like you can read your, my mind because <laughs> it's so intense. You're right. <laughs> Dennis, I would like to applaud you for your speech. You start with humor, and your speeches do tend to be humorous. But this is probably one of the most serious talks that I've ever seen you do. And I was really impressed by how you made such a powerful point about how important professors are and teachers in general in shaping minds. So I would applaud you on being serious. The only thing I would suggest is watch your hand movement because you you kind of just kept like a reptar thing was going on. You know? they, they were moving, but just only at the wrist, so it was really weird. 
Emery, you're a great storyteller. You always shape stories so beautifully. And I will give you the same suggestion I gave Jean. You know, just get to the meat. Because by the time I was really drawn into what you were saying, it was over. And I was, felt so let down because you had built it up so nicely. So again, just get to the meat. You're a great storyteller, and we want to hear your story. Prana, we always love to hear you talk <laughs> because you bring a sort of childlike enthusiasm to everything you say. <laughs> the, the one suggestion I would give to you is limit what you're talking about because you want to talk more, you want to talk about two things, but the ghee was sufficient, and I could tell that you like making ghee, so if you had just focused more and really examined what you like about it, we would know more about that and it would have been a more powerful speech. And finally, Dan, you had the hardest question of the night by far, <laughs> but what really made that a wonderful speech is that you were so genuine, and you could, I could, we could all tell you were very genuine, it was very nice. I was like, you almost blushed a little bit, so <laughs> enjoy it. Thank you. Mr. Timer, which evaluators this evening qualified? Uh, both of them qualified. Well, I am uh, the evaluation for uh, Fraser and Sandalia for the topics, both of them qualified. Great, thank you. So I invite everyone to vote for the best evaluator of the evening. Thank you very much, helpers. And I would like to get now reports from our role players this evening. First, Kashif, could you give a report on timing? Who took how much time? Uh, I'm not now going to give a report uh, about how well every speaker used their time. And uh, the report is very promising, actually. Uh, each one of uh, them qualified. Uh, we had one speaker tonight, uh, uh, prepared a speech is Fraser Jones. He utilized 7 minutes, 26 seconds and 39 milliseconds. Uh, for table topics we had uh, 6 speakers and uh, all of them qualified also. Uh, it started with Jean, who utilized 1 minute, 55 seconds, and 28 milliseconds. Art, 2 minutes, 18 seconds, 64 milliseconds. Denise, 2 minutes, 7 seconds, 0 to 2 milliseconds. Very precise. <laughs> and Emery, 138 and 44 milliseconds. Prana, 2 minutes, 23 seconds, 71 milliseconds. Dan Craig, 1 minute, 50 seconds, 84 milliseconds. Okay, and uh, the speech evaluators, uh, both of them qualified, Orion Abrams and Centuria. Orion utilized 2 minutes, 17 seconds, 10 milliseconds. Centuria, 4 minutes, 27 min uh, <coughs> seconds, 33 milliseconds. So that's the report for the night. <laughs> devices that um, Frazier used and there were many so thank you um, for example you use some like puppet puppet and zombie to describe this kind
kind of state that you were trying to describe and that we don't react by getting our strings pulled. I thought that was great. And in mathematics, two negatives is a positive. It really drove a point. Thank you. Um, and some great alliteration, cool, calm, and collective. There were many, so I'll leave it at that, and those was really nice. <clears throat> Prana, it was really beautiful when you stated and you restated for you what mastery was, and is a state of effortlessness. I thought that was really hit at home. And Dan, I really liked when you said the answer, to answer this theoretical question, I'm going to borrow from real life. I thought that was a really great use of language. I didn't notice any very, you know, think grammar, grammar that would stand out too much. And so thank you all for letting me share my report with you. And now I'd like to hear from our awe counter for this evening. Deliver the bad news. <laughs> <laughs> Orion Abrams, one uh, one um, one you know. Fraser Jones, one so, two repeats, and one false start. Will Burns, I think I was distracted by your very sharp way of dressing today. <laughs> so I didn't really count any. <laughs> yeah, you didn't did learn from Fraser. He dresses like a boss. Like a boss. <laughs> 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 I like it. I like it. Sorry. Susanna, well done. I, I was successfully distracted by his, his suit. So. <laughs> Mistakes in terms of ah counter. Marco, I think I just noted one so for you. Jean and Art. Perfect. I didn't notice anything. So, so there must be some, something I wasn't paying attention to. <laughs> the speeches were too good today. A lot of those table topics, I probably missed. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. I probably missed. <laughs> because those speeches were pretty good. They were really good. Well done. Prana. This has one ah. Uh, I think wow. just one ah. Uh. Wow. As far as as I. This <laughs> is just too good, and, and you made me feel really good. My that ego. Really good. My ego. Is like, right. I probably won't be able to fit through a door now. <laughs> <laughs> so Dan Craig, Santoya Rush, Emery Styron, Kashif, Kashif, and Tabitha. Tabitha. Perfect. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Now, for a little change of pace, a little bit of humor, I'd like Emery to tell us a joke. Fellow Coastmasters, guests, and years at home, fatherhood, I've found, is a transforming experience. When your kids are small, they think you're a hero. But by the time you're there 18 or so, you've been transformed into a dimwit. <laughs> if you're lucky, by the time they're 30 or so, you'll be transformed back into a wise person. Edna, what? <laughs> you don't have to answer. I have five quick riddles relating to fatherhood and uh, healthy prizes from my garden. Garden for anyone who takes a guess. One. How do fathers exercise at the beach? Look at him moving his hat there. Left and right. <laughs> That's close. That's close. They're sucking in their gut when they see a bikini. <laughs> Two, how do you know your dad is planning for the future? He's asleep in his chair. Sleeping in a chair? Wrong. He buys two cases of beer instead of one. Three. Why don't some fathers have a midlife crisis? Always in crisis, I guess. Hmm? Always in crisis. Oh, that's good, yeah. The answer here is they're stuck in adolescence. Four. Why are fathers like parking spaces? You need them. 
because they give you so much space. Good try. <laughs> <laughs> the good ones are already taken. <laughs> <laughs> and my favorite, why did the cookie cry? Hey, that's really that's good. Say it again. Because it had a crummy day. It's good, but not as good as because his father was a wafer. Uh, so long. Uh, wafer. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Yay. This is my opportunity to evaluate the evaluators. We had two evaluators this evening, and first, Orion evaluated Fraser's talk. I thought that Orion's evaluation was very good. He highlighted the things he appreciated about Fraser's talk, mainly his passion and how well organized the talk was. And then you had a very good point about what he could have done differently at the end. So you gave a good balance of highlights that you thought were especially strong and something you thought could have been done differently. So I thought the content of your evaluation was superb. The only suggestion I would make is that when you give the evaluation, you you seemed a little bit sort of buried in your notes or buried in, in reading the points. Another positive thing about your evaluation is that you did refer to the, the aims of that particular talk. And so it was appropriate to look at the manual. But if you, if you could have sort of raised up and say looked at Fraser or looked around the room a little bit more, that would have been more effective for presentation. But I thought the content was excellent. <laughs> Next we have Centoria. And Centoria gave a fairly serious set of evaluations this time. And with her wonderful mix of astute points leavened with a little humor here and there. It was very enjoyable and that helps the points land better, I think, with the people who are giving the talk. What you could have done differently. Very small things. I noticed a little bit of sort of aimless wandering and less sort of deliberate or moving over to talk to this person than, than going to talk to that person, something like that. Might have been a little more effective, but otherwise excellent evaluations. Okay, thank you. And now I'll turn the meeting back over to our Toastmasters for the meeting awards. Topic communication speech number four, how to say it, Fraser Jones. <laughs> Best table topic speaker, Jean Simonton Craig. Best Evaluator, Santoria Rush.
we practice for the picture of Santoria. Best speaker, Fraser Jones. And now, our president for just a little bit longer, Rick Starr. Thank you very much. What a great meeting. Table topics were terrific. All the speakers were terrific. Thank you, Frazier, for your, your passionate argument for rationality, for thinking for yourself. I appreciate it. And a special uh, shout out to Kashif for giving the times in thousands of a second. I really appreciate it. And also, thank you, Frazier, for, for bringing your own cheering section. That was, that was good. <laughs> so as I mentioned, uh, one thing, all the new, new officers, the officers who will be taking office as of July 1st, I have the club manuals. So if you'll see me after the meeting, I'll distribute them to you. A couple of things more. We're still looking for a place to have our party on June 27th. We have one tentative place. We have to look into that. So if anyone can volunteer their backyard, or if anyone knows of a place we could use, just uh, definitely let us know. And I think that's it. Any further club? Oh, one thing. We need one more member. Anyone who knows, anyone who wants to join this Toastmasters club by the end of this month. Huh? One more. I, 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 yes, one more member. So I want to thank you all for coming. Thank you for participating. I declare this meeting adjourned.